Here we go. Ten thirty on KTSA. It's Memorial Day weekend. We got our gang of four in here wrapping up the week. Wrapping up all the big stories and topics of the week, Trish DeBerry Mejia, Jade Esteban Estrada, Jimmy Parks, all with us on the show today. Um, the uh, week began with a state district judge putting a temporary restraining order on the renaming of Durango Boulevard for Cesar Chavez, the late uh, union leader and, and civil rights activist. Um, didn't stop Google Maps, by the way, from immediately changing the name of the street. <laughs> the fastest they've ever exactly. reacted to anything. Wow. Uh, they already had it as Cesar Chavez. They had to turn it back to Durango again. Um, but in any event, uh, how does this story end? Does this story end with uh, protracted legal battles and maybe the renaming being abandoned? Or is this TRO just uh, you know a speed bump? They're going to get it anyway. What do you think, Jimmy? Uh, Jack, it's, this is one of those few questions you ask that I, I don't have any idea. You just don't know how how passionate these people are, because you and I have talked before on this issue, and my opinion, uh, which is one that nobody listens to, has always been that, that it's just so much easier to change buildings. Yeah. You know, it's, just, it's, it's Cesar Chavez is a man that I can't argue needs to be honored. He's done some remarkable things. I mean, he, uh, my family's all farmers, but man, he stood in the face of farmers, and uh, and 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 I was one of the, the few farmer guys, attorney. I was one of the few guys in that family that was saying, "Look, man, somebody needs to do something," because I, 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 I virtually lived daily among those workers, and I and I knew that something had to be done. So I was, I'm impressed with what he did, what he accomplished, his passion. Uh, but when you start changing a boulevard. It affects so many people and so many things. I, I get lost. You know, when I go to, let me, an anecdote. When I go to another city and people are using two different names for a highway or a street, mm -hmm. I always get lost. It'll be, well, this is Connolly Loop or this is 410 or this is 281 or it's, it's you know, General Patton Drive. And, and, and I, like I always get lost. I two up. different numbers on it. Oh, yes, yeah, horrible. <laughs> so I, I just yeah. think you can honor somebody like that and well, uh, with a building, but I don't know about the litigation. But don't it's, you think? that really the whole point of this is that it has to be contentious. The, in order for this to have any political value to Phil Cortez and people like him, it has to be an issue that people fight over. They don't want something well, easy. I mean, they don't want to just yeah, name a building. You certainly have made it. The city council has made it somewhat contentious when you look at the division you know, regarding who voted for right. and who voted against it. Right. You know, it's districts 8, 9, and 10 that voted against it, and then you have districts 1 through 7 which are Hispanic representation that voted for it. So is that because it's a litmus a test? Of, is it a litmus test vote if you're a Hispanic yeah, politician? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's part of it. But I totally agree with Jimmy, too. I think even if they move forward and Durango is sets up Chavez Parkway, people are still going to refer to it as Durango. Because for years. It's, for yeah, time, because it's been time. there. Mm -hmm. So my only <clears> opinion <throat> is, are we doing Cesar Chavez justice? You know, with a ceremonial naming of a street, you know, versus to Jimmy's point, is there a building, is there some way, or some other way to commemorate him in the way that he should be commemorated? Because certainly San Antonio, you know, is ground zero, you know, I would think for Cesar Chavez. There's a march here, and there's right. every other city in the state has, a, has you know, a street named after him. But like in Austin, you, you, they've got TxDOT has signs, Cesar Chavez Parkway. I mean, this is just... a uh, well, Jade, look at it. I mean, here's Trish and Jimmy immediately saying, here are other ways to do it. That's been the discussion all along. There have been more suggestions for alternatives to this than you can count. Clearly, the people behind the renaming are not interested in any other consideration, any other alternative. They're not, they're not willing to say, well, we'll give up the street if we can get this, the park, the mm -hmm. building. I mean... That tells me that there's something more going on here than just honoring him. This is about making a point that they only believe can be made through battling out the renaming of this street. Well, you know what comes to mind? I was talking to a couple of the councilmen actually this week, and one of them was District 10 you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Councilman Reed Williams, and he was saying how um, a lot of people are ma making it like a big deal when in fact when they went back and asked the people who lived on Durango that they just really, it, it just seems like too much trouble to change over their street, and it was more like a logistic thing that's going on, and, and I think... I think in any other, like a building or any other street would be fine. Durango is, it used to be really south of downtown back in the day. Now it truly is 
right smack I mean it, it's it is central downtown for all intents and purposes so changing it requires a lot of of doing and undoing and I think that has a lot more to do with what is the issue at hand well, there's a cost associated with it I mean, I think they have, what, $100,000? Yeah. You know, fun. when you look at, you know, businesses that are along there, card changes, postal <clears throat> changes, that kind of thing, and you're looking at $100,000 on a on a city budget that's already strapped and tapped. That hurts. And, you know, I'm, I, my office is right off of Durango. We have to use it for directions. And invariably, at least two, <clears throat> maybe three times a year, uh, a new client will call up wanting to hire me. And we have, and that was a joke. Oh, <laughs> I just got that. I'm sorry. I'll explain that to you later. He needs a drummer, yeah, doesn't exactly. he? I was like a say, rim we need shot. A rim shot. Yeah. I really do. Yes. <laughs> it was a joke because I don't have near that many. But anyway, the uh, we have to use Durango as a point of reference because right. that's where we are. So it's there goes my clientele. But I, you know, I have to say this as well, um, and Trish makes the point that this is every other city has something mm -hmm. that, that's dedicated to Cesar Chavez, and we've been having this debate for uh, is it almost yeah. 14 years, mm -hmm. something like that. I remember when they were trying to do the airport thing. Mm -hmm. All I know is, um, at some point, this isn't about him anymore. That's right. Sure. At some point, this is about making uh, a point, a point with your base, and a point to the opponents. Uh, Scott Stroud in the Express News said last Sunday, this is the equivalent of kicking in the door. This is making the point that we've arrived, we have a majority on the council, we're going to take this street that we know you hate the thought of renaming, and it's going to happen anyway. And so it isn't about honoring him, because uh, as, as Jimmy said, and as you've said, and as everybody said, you could name any number. You could name things haven't yet been built after him. You mm -hmm. could put his name on something brand new. There's no changing at all. Mm -hmm. But what this is this is in, in intended, I believe, to make a point, and maybe for Phil Cortez too. This is his victory lap. This is his, the way he leaves his legacy. Uh, but I think it's too bad because they'll always say they were doing it for him, and I think this has little or nothing to do with him. I, I really do. Yeah, and you know, uh, they, it would be much more appropriate had we named it after. Judge Hippo Garcia, because he was one of the one of the best district judges and one of the best federal judges we've ever had. He was a Hispanic leader. Uh, he was the bellwether of Hispanics within the legal community, and he actually presided over courts right off of Durango Road uh, most of his adult life. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's in a way I understand the notion that you keep alive somebody as a historical mm -hmm. figure. You. You encourage young people to find out who their school is named after, or who their street is named after. But to me, this stopped being about that a long time ago. And this became about, we, we can't climb down from our position and accept your compromise offer, Jimmy, of a new building or a, or a park because we're going for a street. We're going for a long five and a half mile street. We don't want anything less because that makes us look weak. That kind of reminds me of a joke that one of my colleagues in Austin says all the time. It's really, it, it, it's appropriate to this. He says, uh, uh, everybody remembers Davy Crockett's last words. He's like, name every middle school after <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and isn't it ironic that the last renaming was taking um, uh, Bowie's name off of part of Bowie Street mm -hmm. to rename it Tower of the Americas Way so the tourists could find Tower of America, which I'm a little right. concerned yes. about yes. the people visiting. Problems. Yeah, the ones with neck problems. Yes. that's so hard to find. Which one is it again? Look up. <laughs> All right, we're back with our gang of four after a news break with Karen 1039 on KTSA. KTSA News Time 1044. Gang of four is here on the radio. It's Jimmy Parks, Jade Esteban Estrada, Trish DeBerry Mejia. My God, do we have a lot of names on the show. Today. <laughs> All right. Three minimum. Three people in the studio with me and nine names. <laughs> um, we were just talking off the air about this, uh, and it's the question on the JR poll today, which you can get on my Facebook page or on the uh, Jack Riccardi page, KTSA.com. Uh, she's driving around mm -hmm. in a bus touring uh, various states giving speeches. She has a documentary film coming out. She has a pack. She uh, is buying a house apparently in Arizona, so An she won't be house. way out in uh, the boonies in Alaska. 
Uh, it sure looks like uh, Sarah Palin is already running for president. I thought you were talking about Lady Gaga. I know! <laughs> and I it's know. not just any bus, it's a no, bus I'm with Purple Mountain Majesties on the, the Constitution. Uh -huh. <laughs> on the side of the bus. I mean, yeah, you got awesome. the Constitution, you got the Liberty Bell. I don't know, I mean. I love it. What's up here? She's What's she doing? On, she's going on a big Northeast tour. She wants to get back to the roots of how this country was built. Why what buses, she says. Trish? What is it with politicians and buses? Well, I mean, you know, you know, you want to see that you're you, you're you're a person of the people. And the so, people have cars. Yeah, and you're, exactly. <laughs> well, but I mean, buses. <laughs> If they take an airplane, you know. I'm waiting for a candidate always. who goes around in a Ford Escape. I'm like, right. all right, now this guy I can relate to. <laughs> it makes a statement. It makes yeah. a statement. Every when you roll big, into town on a big bus, it's, it's, right, exactly. Yeah, it's the closest thing we have to that that whole thing that we used to have that made America so great. So it like legitimizes right. you. It's like it's, it's, like, it's, it's what a symbol. You're it's a symbol. Well, in the absence of trains, it's like a whistle stop tour. <clears throat> yeah. Like, you know, I mean, like she's you know, Abraham Lincoln right, calling. Hoover. I mean, all those used to. Yeah, you couldn't take Amtrak on a tour. You'd be late. No, because you know, yeah, because you wouldn't be around the campaign. Very much. Yes. Jimmy, is she running or is she just making a lot of money and keeping her name out there? That's a lot of people think this is really just about, you know, the, the, the business of Sarah Palin. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think she's running. I, Jack, and it, it's because she's, you, you'd have to think your ego wouldn't let you not run at mm -hmm. this stage when you're that high in the polls. Yeah. I mean, you're right behind Mitt Romney. Uh, and yeah, you're he's pretending at like she's at 15. <clears throat> yeah, and, and Trish, she's she's avoiding answering the question. Right. She's avoiding making that move. You would imagine that that she'd get that bump once she announces, and she would all of a sudden be as high as mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I, I think I, I think she's going to run. I I really think it's the wrong thing to do, uh, but I just I believe it's inevitable. Trish, you're the you know you're sort of the strategist for uh, mm -hmm. managing public image mm -hmm. and opinion. It might just be that if you're Sarah Palin and you want your reactions and opinions to current events to be top of the list, which they are, sure. um, you have to keep people right on the You have to keep them brink. guessing. You have to keep That's them right. guessing. You can't get in because then you become just another one right. of the flock. You can't say, I'm not getting in because then instantly well, you get Well, she's done exactly what she wanted to do, and that is we're all talking about, is right. she in or is she not in? Right. So, I mean, it's a, it's a perfect strategy, which... Mm -hmm. You know, give Sarah credit. I mean, she is she manipulates media really, really well. Um, you know, she's not she's not saying she's not in, but she's not saying she's not not in. And so, as a result, the question you know on pundits' minds and broadcasters is, you know, is she going to run or is she not going to run? So, she's getting a heck of a lot more publicity right now than Mitt or New. Jane, isn't it killing these other Republican candidates though? Because I mean, as long as that people are waiting to see what she will do. Yep. They're not really paying attention to the guys that are running. Mm -mm. No, they're not. And it's really interesting, you know, as far as deciding you're going to run or not going to run. It takes so much effort to run a campaign in the first place. You have to, like, really, really decide and really want it. And obviously that's what she's doing. I mean, She I mean, says she has the fire in the belly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have something she can take for that. Well, I mean, the only thing that, that tells people that maybe she's not is because she doesn't have a, a press person. You know, right now she hasn't hired anybody. When you look at New Hampshire, South Carolina, those places that she needs to be in and have a grassroots structure inherent within those states, mm -hmm. there's been no structure. But and are so there that's people why, waiting? Oh, yeah, 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 you know, absolutely. You know, when she, wow, when she pulls the trigger, happen. absolutely. Is it uh, possible that the Obama administration, the, the Obama campaign, rather, is, is crossing their fingers and hoping... hoping that she is the nominee, or do you think she is somebody they would be worried about? I think I think both. I think they're they're hoping she's the nominee, but maybe maybe they're underestimating her. And in my lifetime throughout the world, I have seen demagogues who who really had little or no substance to 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 their platform and to what they said. But man, if they can deliver well, like Trish is talking about, if they look good and she's gorgeous, and they deliver well and they have a message and they know how to say it. They just enrapture people. So she's the kind of person that that I'd really be scared to death of because I, I think she can take those issues and blur every issue and and perhaps mesmerize you with personality. Rick Perry today uh, is leaving the door open mm -hmm. every day. It's a little mm -hmm. different with the governor today, and apparently with this governor, it must be a very expensive door because that house is ten thousand a month. Yeah. <laughs> He's leaving the door open now. Look. There are people trying to draft him. I don't know whose ego could withstand mm -hmm. a draft, Trish, right? Yes, exactly. 